Ah! <coughs> That's a good start. Here we go. Game number three between Benevolent Morons and Team Kessel. Spawning down here in the six o'clock position of GSL Metropolis for Team Benevolent Morons, it is Baja. And spawning across from him in the top right, in the purple color he's playing for Team Kessel, is Fucking Ponch. TVT on Metropolis. Uh, early game, it will revolve around this watchtower. If you can control that watchtower, you're able to take your side of the map. If you can't control that watchtower, of course, you're going to have to play a little bit more defensively and try and find a way to break your opponent's siege line. Now, it does have some really nice places to contain your opponent. If you can set up your siege tanks out in this area, uh, all of a sudden your opponent's really confined to the, their natural, and you can start moving in to shell their ramp and cut off their reinforcements. So we'll see what both players have in mind for this map. <coughs> Excuse me. This is our first Gold League game for this week, or for this week, for this match, uh, between BM and Team Castle. And we're tied at one so far, so a win goes a long way toward getting your team to victory, I guess, in the most awkward phrasing possible. Again, this is CTL week number two. We'll be back tomorrow uh, with week number three. Uh, I do have two games picked out. I can't quite remember them offhand. Uh, I know I will be doing Team Evo versus Team Payback. Uh, I know that that game's already been casted, but I really want to. So there. Uh, and then the other one, I believe, is Spinal Tap versus Killer Pikachus. Uh, I might be wrong on that, but I think think those are the two games. Nobody quote me. You can, you can check up on me, I guess. So we see Falcon Punch has got in. Uh, his SCV will be able to spot that refinery, which is a very important piece of information in TBT. It means that his opponent will be getting some sort of attack on one base. Now Fal Falcon Punch naturally throwing caution to the wind, not getting a gas geyser of his own, instead throwing down that command center. So one racks expand from Falcon Punch, and we'll probably see him stick more with Bio. Whereas Baja is going to check out quickly. We'll see if he gets a quick Banshee, uh, or if this is just for Factory, or what have you. There's quite a few openings you can do once you do get that first Gas Geyser. And then we see a second one coming down. This is a little late uh, for a Banshee opening, but it couldn't still work. Um, so I guess we'll check in with that uh, and see what kind of tech Baja wants to choose. Falcon Punch, meanwhile, going for the standard follow-up. One racks into three, and he'll be cranking out the Mariners, and he'll need quite a few of them if his opponent is going for a Cloaked Banshee, or even a non-Cloaked Banshee, as his tech is just going to be very delayed, and this is a good choice. He's using <coughs> his extra mineral income. Usually that would be the time when you throw down your double gas geyser. Instead, gets an engineering bay. He'll get up a couple... Uh, maybe just two or three missile turrets, and he'll feel very, very safe. So his natural command center finished up. That'll turn immediately into an orbital, and pretty soon... I think Falcon Punch will be a little ahead based on this opening. It will come down to this Banshee. If Baja controls it well, he can still do quite a bit of damage with those missile turrets there. Uh, and if nothing else, he might be able to pick off those Mariners uh, that Falcon Punch uh, has been working on, and he can follow up with, say, a tank timing attack as we're seeing with this second tech lab coming down. So we'll see kind of what happens. Baja will have a lower marine count, so he needs to rectify that somehow. Uh, and this is really nice scan, really good timing on that. He's able to see everything going on, and he'll assume Banshee with a tank follow-up. Uh, seeing that earlier tech lab on the factory will kind of indicate to him that it's not a cloaked Banshee, uh, so he may not build as many turrets as he would. He has one in this mineral line, he's actually got none over it as natural. But he's starting to really reinforce his front, which is where the attack's going to happen. He'll get there on a tech lab and a reactor, and we'll see probably a couple of marauders, uh, which will help out immensely versus those siege tanks. And this will all come down to one furious engagement. Baja will be, I don't want to say a little bit all in, he'll be pretty all in. Nope, never mind, he's not going to be all in at all. Instead he's going to throw down that command center. 
He'll be behind economically, but he won't be all in. If we look right now, Falcon Punch has the one SCV lead. As long as both players can continue their SCV production, he'll stay. Or he'll get a little bit farther ahead here. Probably up to five or six SCVs, just naturally. So we'll see what he wants to do with this Banshee. That's really telling. If he'll start going after the... You always start by going after workers. Usually you want to try and get gas workers. Um, and really just see how many kills you can get with your Banshee. And we'll see if he starts actively trying to pick off these Marines. No, he's actually just going to get out of there. Looks like he was trying to shoot and scoot. Didn't quite work out for him as he targeted the Supply Depot. Now he will need to run away as there's five Marines here. That's more than enough to deal with it. And the Banshee gets away. <coughs> Falcon Punch, meanwhile, will be playing Bio. Uh, it looks like he's going for the reactor on his factory. Unless this is kind of a weird Hellion play. Uh, it looks like these will just be for double medevac. But he's getting everything very saturated. You can hear the motorcycle revving in the background. I don't know whose it is or why they're revving their motorcycle. <coughs> and as I say that, he's just getting earlier medevacs. He's going to get some siege tanks as well. I actually really like this style that Falcon Punch is playing. If you show Bio early, your opponent might overcommit, and then you can set up your own siege line. Baja, meanwhile, he's invested a lot in his tech, and he's not going to really make use of his tech advantage. Instead, he'll be on basically the same production buildings as his opponent as soon as these two finish. Instead, he'll just be generically behind. He's got siege mode way before his opponent. And this is something that you can always use to punish your opponent. And if you can't, well, then you just pull out as soon as you see your opponent see a job. It's really quite simple. But with this force, Baja could go. He could maybe break the front. He could see up and get to this ramp. He could maybe hit this barracks and force it a little bit of discomfort. It's a choice that Baja's not making. Instead, he's just kind of falling behind economically, I think. 33 to 29. So I guess it's not as bad, but there is a significant advantage for Falcon Punch. Three barracks happily turning away. He's getting some stick first, which is kind of interesting. It indicates that he wants to do a little bit of pressure. <coughs> now, will it be through drops, or will he just attack at the front with a, a good force of Baja? There's three siege tanks out for Baja. He's making them one at a time, and both players supply blocked at 70. So, pretty even game. There's a second factory, actually. So, Baja might be a player that we'll see switch into a little bit more mech as the game goes on. There's another scan by Falcon Punch, and they seem to be throwing these out like gravy. Uh, Baja actually mixing in a couple of marauders as well. So, this is one of those weird games where your opponent's doing exactly the same thing as you uh, in TBT. <laughs> there should be more units here, right? There's two medevacs. There they are! Hi! Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Uh, there's a siege tank in with this one. So this is kind of an interesting drop. There's two marauders. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight marines and a siege tank. So it's a really mixed drop, but it'll have a lot of power behind it. If he can siege that tank up in a good spot, he sets himself up in an offensive position that it's tough to break inside his opponent's base. And that can be really, really good, or he can just get his drop crushed and lose that really valuable piece of tech that he's invested into. His stim pack is done, and he does have siege mode. He's not quite sieging up yet. Instead, he tears through those gas SCVs, and now he'll stim up and start targeting down that command center. <coughs> he probably shouldn't be able to get it, although he's not responding well enough. Baja loses a medevac there, and he will actually lose his main command center. That's really surprising. The bio all picks up and Falcon Punch will get away. That one Marine will no man left behind in the army of Falcon Punch, and now Baja has interesting choices to make. He's got a third commander on the way, uh, later than his opponent. He's got a lot later than his opponent uh, in this game, and now he's out of command center in his main. And that's really nerve-wracking as a Terran player to lack that main command center. On the other hand, uh, Falcon Punch, eight workers killed the eight. These Banshees have been poking in and harassing a little bit. You can see the damage they've taken, six and two, respectively, on his two Banshees. But now the turret ring's starting to extend, and those Banshees are going to really start to drop in effectiveness. 
Third Orbital Command nearly on the way. There's another scan coming down from Baja. And Falcon Punch going a little bit heavier on the bio. He's up to five barracks, one factory, one starport. He's making Vikings in his starport. It's interesting to note. Uh, saying, in fact, that his three or four medevacs are enough for him. Oh, he does have five. There we go. And the victorious drop units returning back to their base. Baja, meanwhile, going a little bit heavier on his mech. He'll have the higher siege tank count. <coughs> Which, while it used to mean everything in this matchup, now it's kind of dropped in importance as people have figured out how to deal with entrenched siege positions. We see Baja starting to fall a little bit behind in supply just based on losing that command center. Now he'll finally remake that as soon as he gets to 400. Don't make me a liar. There we go. So both players on three command centers. Uh, there's a drop coming down, though, from Falcon Punch. Uh, does a little bit of damage to that third command center, but he's going to go after the economy again. Uh, this drop won't be able to escape here. I'm not sure that was really worth it. He got four workers. So definitely not worth it. Four for uh, four supply for ten tends to not go in favor of the player that lost the ten. But it's always good to keep that pressure on your opponent. He'll at least be wary of drops throughout the entire game as long as you keep dropping. That wasn't just a one and done thing uh, from Falcon Punch. There's another scan in. He'll see that command center rebuilding. Meanwhile, Baja back in the middle of the map. Uh, he should know that he's a little bit behind. So he need to get a really, really good positioning, a really good contain to make any move out worthwhile. <laughs> so we'll see what his decision is. Falcon Punch has landed his third, as has Baja, uh, but Falcon Punch the first to start really mining there. And we even see crossing his T's, dotting his I's, building a missile turret down into his third base, and everything looking really solid for Falcon Punch, and he definitely has the lead in this game. If you look, he's up by 11 workers. He's got a couple more medevacs. He's got a way higher Viking count. Uh, the only thing he's not really leading is that siege tank count. But as we said, that can that can be overcome. It's not as big a deal as it used to be. Plus one weapons on the way for Baja, but that'll be his first upgrade. You know, plus two weapons on the way to get Falcon Punch to one. It's really weird saying Falcon Punch and not Falcon Punch. <laughs> Just so you know. Falcon Punch's second uh, factory is done now, and he's starting to get close to his max, and we'll see what kind of transition he wants to make. Traditionally, Terrans will kind of max out on this general unit composition, Marine Marauder, Medevac, Viking, Tank. Just these units are the core units. After that is the crapshoot. Do you want to go Ghosts? Do you want to stick with your bio? Do you want to completely switch to Sky Terran? Do you want to switch to Mech? You can do that. There's a lot of options once you hit your max for the first time. We see Falcon Punch staying on top of his upgrades. He'll go up to 3-2, going up to Ship Weapons level 1, which kind of indicates to me that he wants to switch into Sky Terran uh, pretty soon. Baja getting himself into a good defensive position. He needs to siege up, though. Uh, he's getting a little bit caught. There's finally the siege up. Uh, there's the stim in. But it looks like Falcon Punch is just going to tear through here. Upgrades really superior for him, and he crushes that army. 162 supply to 62, and that was mostly upgrades. The medevacs helped out as well. The Vikings, of course, can't be overlooked, but Baja had the pure power in the siege tanks, but they're not upgraded. His Marines and Marauders only 1-0. That was all on the upgrades for Falcon Punch. He moves in, he loses a good chunk of units, but they're still all fine. He'll move up in the main, now he's camping his opponent's production, and that's going to be the end of the game. Oh, Merix goes down. Even the siege tanks now slowly rolling in for Falcon Punch. He'll be able to siege up the natural. There's the GG for Baja, and game number three goes to Team Kessel, and they'll take a 2-1 to -one lead as we head to game number four. So please stay tuned for that. We'll have a platinum level game in just a couple of minutes. This is Marismatic Casting CTL. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with the Platinum Level Game 4 in just a second. <laughs> 